Good morning, everyone. So another edition of Greg's Bedroom Tips. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry if some of you are a little bit scared with the uh, titles that I use, but uh, I guess it's uh, one way of getting you to, to click and, ha and have a listen to what I've got to say. So and if you can look at it, you can guess that I'm talking about photography. Um, and also, why am I dressed like this in the bedroom? So, uh, most mornings I get up and walk the dog, and this is the scary look that the poor people of Wodonga have to put up with as I walk around Wodonga, um, definitely looking like more like a robber. Um, also, sorry to any of you who, who say hi to me, because uh, I take that opportunity to listen to some... Uh, Audible, so listening to some some motivational books or educational books or something like that. So, so yeah, that's why I'm usually rugged up because it was I'm pretty sure minus something this morning. Oh, look at that lovely hat here. Um, so I go go for a walk one because the dog needs a walk. Uh, I need a walk. Um, I guess we need to keep our bodies sort of what well, does have to be in perfect shape, but Going for a bit of a walk definitely helps uh, me enjoy some of the, uh, the food I like. So if I didn't, then I'd probably just stand up <clears throat> uh, being rounder than I am. So so we go for a walk, which is good. But one of the things that I find when I go for a walk is that I keep seeing all beautiful scenery. So I go for work early in the morning and I see great sunrises. Um, the same exception, so absolutely beautiful out there. And... I see these and the only thing that I've got on me is my phone. So I was taking photos with my phone over the, uh, probably the last few years as I go walking. Uh, and, and it's really good. I've got a, a really happy with Samsung phone. Um, S9 Plus has a great camera. Uh, I've got one with extra storage so I can fit my photos in without filling up the phone. So yeah, it's been, it's been brilliant. But I've been into photography for, for many years and I really do like it. I uh, had a couple of small point-and-shoot cameras, and I've had digital cameras over the years. Uh, I've had film cameras with my father being a bit thrown to photography and taking a lot of slides. Um, back then, you would take a photo and send the, the film away and wait and then find out that your camera was faulty and the shutter was only going across halfway. So digital photography is just so much easier. You can take a lot more photos. Um, uh, in, in fact, that's probably one of the, the disadvantages and one of the reasons that uh, I think the, the amount of data we've created in the last two years is something like 98% of all data created in, in the world over, over time. So, And I heard that about five years ago. So it's probably the statistics have changed hugely since then. So, yes, photography is one of the things that we're take, making more and more videos, which uh, just adds to our, our data. Um, anyway, so I was taking good photos with my phone. I wanted something a bit better. So I bought a cheap um, Canon HEOS SLR, um, got it at a really good price in pretty good nick. But I started taking photos and I realised the photos I was taking with this weren't as good as what I was taking with my phone. And it comes down to these take what you see. So um, you, there's a lot more control over it. So software in in the phone that uh, enhances the photo, um, you know, there's filters that are, are built into it. So, yeah, you know, it's very easy to take. But I got some following some friends on on Facebook and uh, and other mediums and absolutely loving their photos. And a couple of them, is, uh, Danny J Photography, Danny Jones, my, his photos are brilliant. I, I bought one of his canvases and have it on the wall um, in the other room. Uh, and Craig Patterson. And Craig's realistic, uh, realistic photos by Craig. If you get a chance, jump on. He's absolutely amazing. His photos, just uh, I've seen them straight. At, puts them up straight off at the camera, and they are. Both. Um, so I follow them, and, and you sort of see what they're they're doing, and you you want to you know try and replicate it. So one of the local uh, photography groups on Facebook, um, all good on like that. Um, and seeing again, you see all these great photos by some professionals and some not so professional photographers. So uh, from that, I said, you know, how do you get better at this? You know, do you just do YouTube or, or whatever? And someone put me on to uh, Phil Bell uh, and I've done one, cl one class with him. He's uh, really reasonably priced, really nice guy. 
Uh, and, and again, it was just, he, he explained half the buttons and settings on the camera. So I went out after that, uh, a couple of our training session and took some half decent photos. So definitely, you know, getting a little bit of um, support and training uh, really helps. Um, the, the biggest problem, I suppose, with, with something like this is you got to lug that around. Um, so it's really hard if I'm going walking up the hill with the dog in one hand and a backpack with this or this hanging around my neck and you look really quite strange. Um, they sort of swing around. Yeah, it's not a lot of fun. Whereas um, taking a phone, clips to your belt, you can really take some good photos with that. So, so I don't always take my big camera, but um, so I took the, the phone this morning and, and again, I'll put up some photos, but beautiful sunrise um, and uh, yeah, it looked, looked really good. So that was just a couple, I thought I'd touch brace. So uh, down to the flashing in public, well, it was just a reference to photography, but, uh, and again, these days, I suppose, on that, you don't actually have to use flash. The, the new smartphones and the way their cameras work, um, ultra good in low light. So again, with the smart in a phone, photos in, in near dark, and uh, they'll come out half decent. Whereas with a, with a bigger camera, yeah, you'll need a flash, and, and then once you need a flash, you'll need uh, all the extra equipment to go with it because you get red eye. Whereas if you put, uh, you know, put filters and that on them, uh, you won't get so much red eye or not so bright, bright, uh, um, I suppose, bright, and the rest of the being too dark. So uh, there's a lot more to there. But okay, so one of my new passions, as you can tell, is photography. And I will apologise for all the photos I'm going to put up. But <clears throat> I love it, uh, and when I go walking, I see this, see these photos. Uh, or I don't see the photos; I see something that I want to capture, uh, and it's just a matter of working out how to capture it. Uh, again, I go riding a push bike, and I want to see a full shot, but it's very hard to, to camera. I did uh, go on a high T uh, rail uh, ride out to Tulangata, and did have this around my neck, and riding a push bike, just taking photos. So. Um, luckily, didn't end up in the in the dirt and broke my camera, but I, I was able to capture it. But it's a bit hard riding a bike with a camera hanging off your hand. So, um, the day that we have glasses and we can you know, just say take photo and it takes what the eye can see, uh, it's probably just around the corner. Uh, uh, anyway, that's it for this morning, and that's Greg's bedroom tips. So yes, you can flash in public, but only if you're using a camera. All right, guys, have a great day. See ya.